Thanks for clicking. While the Bank of Canada might be done raising interest rates, expect credit to continue to tighten. This was the message coming out of recent notes from Scotiabank and the Bank of Montreal. In this tightening, says Bank of Montreal economist Robert Kavchik, could in fact delay the turnaround in Canada's real estate market. And Kavchik has a history of offering predictions that tend to pan out, calling out Canada's housing supply myth during the pandemic real estate boom, noting that the double-digit increase in housing prices weren't due so much to a housing supply problem as due to ultra-low interest rates. Well, hindsight is 2020. Kind of seems like regular sight should have caught that one. And the notes coming from Scotiabank and the Bank of Montreal come as some are predicting a quick turnaround in Canada's real estate market, arguing that pent-up demand, housing supply, and monetary easing will push prices back upwards. And that, indeed, very well could be the case. But the point being made by the banks is that it's far, far too early to tell. So what I want to do today is go over the notes being offered by Scotiabank and the Bank of Montreal, take a look at some of the evidence that the real estate market is bringing back to life, and then discuss what to look for next. Speaking of next, Canada's budget is set to be released tomorrow, which will obviously have a major impact on our economy, on our inflation rate, on our real estate market going forward. We'll obviously have an update out on that budget on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates. But for now, let's get into the banks. Onto the banks. Scotiabank recently released a report saying that although the Bank of Canada has paused on interest rate hikes and has signaled that it's going to continue with that pause, we will continue to see effective tightening well into 2023. And the reason, says Scotia, is that the real policy rate, the real interest rate, is getting higher as inflation continues to fall. And we've talked about real interest rates before on this channel. Real interest rates, that is, interest rates adjusted for inflation, more reflect the true cost of borrowing, the true cost of money. If I borrow $100 from you at a 1% interest rate at the end of the year, I owe you $101. However, if inflation is running at 6%, when I give you back that $101, it is worth far less than it was the year prior. The buying power of that $101 has diminished by 6%. In effect, I had a negative 5% interest rate and was, in fact, being paid to borrow money. I'll make that deal. And when I can get a negative interest rate, when I can be paid to borrow money, that encourages me to borrow. That encourages me to borrow and spend. And it's for this reason, historically at least, that the policy rate has always been higher than that of the inflation rate, or very close to it. But back in July of 2020, during the pandemic, when interest rates were basically at zero and inflation started to creep upwards, the real interest rates got more and more negative with borrowers being basically paid to borrow money, having to pay back, in real terms, much less than they borrowed. But, says Scotiabank, this began to change in May of 2022, as the Bank of Canada started to raise rates, and, eventually, our inflation rate started to recede, we started to see real rates start to rise, moving closer to positive territory. And Scotia is quick to note that it's real interest rates, not nominal interest rates, which are the real cause of economic tightening. And it makes sense, as we just saw, even if interest rates hit 20%, if inflation is sitting at 40%, then it still makes sense for me to borrow. I'm still getting paid 20% per year to borrow money. But when real rates are positive, when there's an economic cost imposed on those who are borrowing, that's when we really see the economic tightening begin, as borrowers are less likely to borrow. In this, says Scotia, is what is happening right now with the magnitude of the cost of borrowing set to increase as inflation continues to recede. Right now, the prime rate is sitting at 6.7%, and the inflation rate is sitting at 5.2%. So, the real interest rate, if you borrowed at prime, is 1.2%. But, as inflation continues to recede, assuming it does, as inflation continues to come down, that gap between the prime rate and the inflation rate will continue to get wider, thereby increasing the true cost of borrowing, the real cost of borrowing. And Scotia says that this increase in the real cost of borrowing will be equivalent to 150 basis points of rate hikes coming from the central bank. So what Scotiabank is saying is that even though the Bank of Canada has tightened on interest rate hikes, at least for now, the tightening in credit is still coming. It's still occurring. And as such, we still haven't seen the full effects of the bank's policies. And with the increase in real interest rates and the increase in the actual true cost of borrowing combined with higher rates coming out of the U.S., Scotiabank is expecting the Canadian economy to continue to cool. And as we mentioned so many times on this channel, a cooling economy, a recessionary economy in general, is not good for house prices. People without jobs cannot buy houses. Enormous load of horse And the Bank of Montreal's Robert Kavchik echoed concerns about an increase in credit tightening in his interview with the Toronto Star, 
noting that although home buyers may be coming off of the sidelines right now, the stresses that we've been seeing in the financial system don't bode well for credit availability. So what Kavchik is saying is that although lower mortgage rates are inducing home buyers back into the market, and those lower mortgage rates are coming as a result of increased economic uncertainty, that increased economic uncertainty could also induce banks to pull back the ease of funding due to that economic uncertainty. Indeed, in the wake of the Silicon Valley banking crisis, Fed Chair Jerome Powell noted that financial conditions are already starting to tighten, which could in fact make banks less likely to lend. So in summary, according to the bank, as the real cost of borrowing goes up, as real interest rates increase, we should see credit continue to tighten. We should see the total cost of borrowing continue to increase, which isn't good for the economy which, as we've seen in the past, isn't great for the real estate market either. Robert Kavchik echoed those concerns, saying that although mortgage rates are down and those mortgage rates are enticing home buyers back into the real estate market, the reasons for those mortgage rates dropping could in fact cause the banks to pull back on the ease of credit as well, which again, wouldn't be great for the housing market either. Yet despite, or even because, of the banking crisis that's hitting the US, so we're beginning to note that consumer sentiment in the housing market is indeed improving. Toronto realtor Bryn Lackey recently noted that she saw four houses listed, and those houses sold within hours of that listing. This sentiment was echoed by Toronto broker Michelle Gilbert, who said that they're seeing a return of multiple offers and bully offers on their listings and real estate agents noting an uptick predicting a rebound in the housing market news at 11. With that said, we did see an increase in prices in the housing market in February, and we very well might see more in March. However, what the banks are saying, what Scotia is saying, what the Bank of Montreal is saying, is that the process of credit tightening isn't over just yet, and it's not a straight shot back to 2021 where we get those ultra low interest rates and house prices go back sky high. The process is not yet complete, and we could see more tightening, more credit tightening, and more effects stemming therefrom as this process goes on. With that said, we will continue to track the process of Canada's monetary tightening on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, thanks so much for watching.